My main topic today is my experience at the recent Blackboard World, and I want to particularly pay attention to Blackboard's new release of their SaaS environment, Software as a Service, and their Ultra experience. The meeting was in July. Uh, it was at in D.C., actually the National Harbor, which I'd never been to before. It's a brand new area, a very impressive Gaylord Hotel. The venue was great. Note to Blackboard. Please don't have your client appreciation party on the last day of the event. Many of us couldn't stay one more night, uh, so that gets kind of expensive. I think that was something new that they've done. Usually it's uh, the night before the last day. Anyway, uh, to move on, I wanted to concentrate on SaaS and Ultra. What is SaaS and what is Ultra? SaaS is software as a service. It's a new platform that can deliver the Blackboard experience either the classic experience, which we're used to now using Blackboard 9.1, or the Ultra experience, which is their new, much more modern user interface. Very slick looking. So the first thing you should know is that SAS is not the Ultra experience. SAS does not equal the Ultra experience. But SAS deployment is required for the Ultra experience. So let's see what all this means. and Let me dig into that a little bit more. First, Blackboard reminds us that they are a major provider of SaaS to the education environment. Um, Blackboard Collaborate is on a SaaS platform. Blackboard Connect, Blackboard Engage, K-12 Central, Explore, which we're not hearing too much about lately. Uh, kind of disappointed in that. SafeAssign, MyEDU, and SchoolWires. They mentioned that they manage their SaaS environment in seven different managed hosting data centers on four continents. It represents the largest private cloud in education worldwide. So Blackboard points out that the Ultra experience is available now in certain products. Collaborate Ultra is available now. BB Student is a mobile app that is very slick that uses the Ultra experience and that is also available now. We're going to be promoting that for our students. Of course it works against our current uh, 9.1 environment. So most of you out there probably have Blackboard Learn self-hosted or, or managed hosted and it's 9.1. That's not going to go away. They don't say when that's going to go away, if ever. So we'll call that the original experience. And Blackboard Learn 9.1 can also be obtained in the SAS environment. And then later you can add on the Ultra experience. So how's this all going to work? First of all, I think there was some anxiety in the crowd about how Blackboard's going to continue to support 9.1. Uh, currently, uh, our institution is on 9.1 April 2014. Support will be extended to the first quarter of 2016. And the October 2014 is going to be extended also uh, to the end of the fourth quarter 2016. So Blackboard is committed to releasing biannual releases, they will repeat every October and every April. So they're going to have a major release every six months. That is what is happening on the current, either managed host it, or uh, of course, if you hosted it your own premises, um, you'll have that ability to update those releases. So what is the Blackboard Learn Ultra Experience Roadmap? Now, what was interesting to me is that it's available now now, I think personally that it's primarily going to be of interest to new accounts, new institutions that are just starting or switching to a, a, to a new LMS, because a lot of what we're used to is not yet available in the ultra experience. So I'm not going to go through the full list, but basically things that you would expect in most LMSs, announcements, notifications, roster, you know, the course content, uh, calendars, discussion, messages, assignments, grades, all that's available now in the Blackboard Learn Ultra experience. But some of the things we definitely would need to have are still in development. So tests, group management, rich page editing, rubrics, uh, integrated framework for publishers, and locale and language selection. These are all things that are still in development for the Ultra experience. And 
to be honest, I still don't have a clear understanding of when that will become available. And there are other features that are in research. There's not even in development yet. So this may be very disappointing to those of us who are on 9.1 and looking to freshen our, our user experience um, you know, in the near, time, near time frame. So in research, tabs and modules. So there's no tabs and modules yet in the Ultra experience. Um, they also list audio and video, learning outcomes, enhanced cloud profile, and safe assign integration. So these are still in research mode for Blackboard Learn. So that I, that I think is probably going to be disappointing for a lot of institutions running 9.1 that we're hoping to move more quickly into the Ultra experience. So how about um, Blackboard Collaborate? Now Blackboard Collaborate, again, the Ultra experience is available now, but a lot of features are not in it. So if you're used to having integration with the Blackboard Student app, uh, it's a very nice app, but that's not integrated into the Ultra Experience yet. That's in beta. MP4 recordings, uh, collaborate specific APIs, LTI integration. These are all in beta right now. Under development, they have integration with the Learn Ultra Experience, persistent and preloaded content, quality feedback analysis, and some others are in development, Re in research, so, which means it's even further out, polling, breakout rooms, native session recording and playback, private chat, integrated telephony, display videos as content, and so on. So there's still quite a bit that is still not in the Blackboard Collaborate Ultra experience. How about mobile? Where are they with mobile? Well, most of you are familiar with Blackboard Mobile Learn which was produced by their purchase of terribly clever designs so way back when. Uh, we also use the Blackboard Mobile Mosaic system for our own university custom mobile app. It looks like Blackboard is moving away from this sort of integrated interface to 9.1 in the form of Blackboard Mobile Learn. Instead, they're bringing out what they're calling persona-based apps. So it's one app based on who you are. So the first one that's been released already is BB Student, which looks very nice and we're going to certainly promote that to our own students here. BB Instructor is coming out and, and they also have plans in the works to do a BB Parent. So in a little more detail, the Blackboard Mobile App Roadmap. What's available now? I forgot to mention BB Grader is uh, already available and out there. Of course they have mobile learn product that we're using. Um, it's not the ultra experience, it's just in general the mobile app roadmap. BB Student is out there now. There are some features of BB Student that are still in beta. Calendar, attending a virtual class which you know with an integration with Collaborate, uh, that's still in beta. In development is a Collaborate SAS link, third-party content, and in research, notifications, enhanced profile integration, and so on. So there's still a lot that's not available on, in these new Persona mobile apps. So moving back to Blackboard Learn and the Ultra Experience, uh, there are a number of questions that uh, I'm sure you have and I had. Uh, for example, will third-party building block extensions work in Ultra Learn? So if you're using um, the original course building blocks, uh, that, are, that come with Blackboard, they should work now. But other building blocks, certainly customized building blocks, are not going to work yet and they're developing a new framework to develop building blocks for the new Ultra Learn. Will my SIS and custom authentication still work in Learn Ultra? Apparently yes, all SIS integration types will continue to work. Apparently the supported authorization types will work except CAS and Shibboleth. And that depends on uh, which of the SaaS environments you choose to purchase. So, speaking of SaaS, there are three tiers of SaaS. Standard, Plus, and Advantage. Plus and Advantage are still in development. All three tiers can give you the original experience, in other words, what we're seeing today in 9.1, or the Ultra experience as they become available. Under standard, you have continuous delivery of features and functionality. 
you have a Curiate certified set of pre-installed building blocks, an LTI, and it supports the Learning Core and Learning Essentials solutions. Now, if you were to go to Plus or Advantage, and again, they weren't clear on the differences. It has to do, I think, with how much customization you might need and how much special specialization. What Plus and Advantage enable you to do is to step back from the continuous delivery of features and functionality and have a more flexible deployment option. So, as I imply, there are two different methods of, of delivery. Continuous delivery, so that means patches are automatically applied, new features are automatically deployed. Now, when they say new features are automatically, automatically deployed, my understanding is that you wouldn't have to deploy them. You could turn them, leave them turned off until you want to deploy them, although that's a little hazy in my mind. Under flexible deployment, which you only get with the plus and advantage, uh, patches are applied automatically, but you can defer new features until the next upgrade window. So you'd have to determine the right tier that you, that you want for your institution. So under standard, which supports learning core and learning essentials, you might be able to use that if you only use third-party building blocks. If you have custom building blocks or you want more flexibility in terms of the system reporting and so forth and deployment options, you'll have to go to plus or advantage. And again, the differences between those are quite hazy in my mind and they're both under development. So this may just be a way for them to uh, market different, uh, uh, different price points. To sum up, the benefits of SAS are enhanced quality, fixes and maintenance happen more quickly. You have an improved experience, meaning that there's zero downtime because of uh, the way the updates are done, easier change management, and more rapid innovation. Enhancements and features come about more quickly, and they say better support. So how do you transition? And this is the big question. You know, if you're on the 9.1 platform here, what would you do? How would you go about moving to these, to the, you know, to SaaS and eventually to the Ultra Experience? So what they say is to first play around, and you can try it on your own. And it's they say it's available to everyone. You go to try.blackboard.com. Now I went there and I haven't heard a word, so they must be rolling this out pretty slowly. So far I haven't been able to try anything. So once that's available, then um, you can play with the Ultra Experience for Learn. You can import existing courses and test the conversion from the original course view to an ultra course view. Then you prepare, you, you learn from your peers and from the, some of the Blackboard subject matter experts and uh, study up on all the documentation and so forth. And there, this fall, there are going to be some opportunities to join uh, cohorts uh, that can help you uh, step through those processes. Then you can pilot it at the school. You can put it into limited production with certain, you know, defined uh, departments or, or sets of courses. And they say that's fully supported by Blackboard. And eventually roll the full system out into production. And this would include data migration from your existing LMS as a part of your transition. So I'm hoping this will be smooth. It's, uh, it's not like going from Angel to Blackboard. Uh, the underlying technology is still Blackboard 9.1, um, which includes, of course, as underpinning the, uh, the Zythos content collection. So that's still a part of the underlying SAS environment. There are apparently two migration options, course-based migration. So you can start with a fresh SAS instance and you can select the courses that you're being, bringing over by um, uh, using archive and restore. And that limits the migration downtime. But the configuration settings are not brought across. If you want that, then you would have to do a full data migration you would clone the current database and file system on the SAS environment. It would restore it to the new SAS instance and it would require some downtime. And that would maintain the existing data and configurations. Blackboard points out that they will provide project planning and management and test migration and final production migration. One of the other things that I guess was most disappointing to me is that uh, we use Blackboard here as the university portal. In fact, we're going through a major change to our theme and, and uh, updating our, our portal as uh, this, this month for the fall term. Since 
there are no there's no defined ultra experience for tabs and modules that's still in research so it's going to be quite some time before we would be able to move to the SAS environment to be able to duplicate what we have now using our managed hosting environment. So that's disappointing. My guess is it's going to be a year or more before we could actually move in that direction, but uh, time will tell. One thing I thought was interesting uh, to note is that uh, after Blackboard World, it came out in the press that Blackboard was looking for, or at least the Blackboard owners are looking for a buyer. So um, if I have my figures right, I think Blackboard was purchased by private equity uh, a couple of years ago for $1.6 billion, and uh, the word is that they're looking for $3 billion uh, to, uh, to buy Blackboard. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. I'm sure they'll, it would take a pretty big company, um, maybe one of the big publishers. Uh, I would be interested in, uh, in Blackboard. I hope that's good for all of us, that kind of a transition. Time will tell. So I'm looking forward to your comments. Please feel free to go to my show notes and continue the discussion. That's all I have for today. So until next time, have a great week.